Welcome to the show. I'm your host, Dom Dumas, and I'm in Bangkok. The Pledge of Allegiance, Episode 38. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Now, before I get into this episode, I don't care what people say. I just need to tell you that, one, I am a patriot. I love my country. I actually, I served in the Navy. If you listen to my episode, past episodes in particular, um, episode one, which you can find at domdumas.com forward slash one, I talk about my time in the U.S. Navy, a little bit about my time, and I do eventually plan on having a full podcast a podcast episode about my time in the United States Navy. I love my country. I've always loved my country. I don't always agree with the politics of the government. Very often I don't agree with the politics that's going on with the government, but I absolutely do love my country. And I would I have gotten into huge arguments with people about the rights as an American citizen, about the things that I feel as an American citizen are my right. And, you know, that's, I've gotten in arguments with people in America and in Thailand, you know, people from all over the world, but that's just about things that are my opinion, I feel are my rights as an American citizen when, especially when, when I'm living in the United States and for the people, their rights that I see that they have for people who live in the United States. But that enough of that, I'll kind of get into that a little bit more here. In a, in a little bit, but first off, the Pledge of Allegiance. I can remember in in, Ju- in sorry in elementary school having to say the Pledge of Allegiance. I both both elementary schools that I went to. I remember having to say the Pledge of Allegiance in junior high, and I remember having to say the Pledge of Allegiance in high school. And this is something that we did every single morning. We had to stand up. We had to put our hand over our hearts and we had to recite the Pledge of Allegiance. Now, I can remember at about 8th grade, I kind of stopped saying it all of the time. And it's not that I don't love my country, you know. I just kind of felt like it was a bit ridiculous to say it every morning. Again, this is absolutely my opinion, you know. So we would stand up, put our hand over our heart, and I would just kind of go, kind of make it look like I was saying the Pledge of Allegiance but actually not making any sound. And like I said, it's not that I don't love my country. I absolutely do love my country, that beyond a shadow of a doubt. And I'll never stop loving my country, you know? And again, it's the, the, my country's politics and the government. That's the things that I have issues with. But anyway, like I said, that'll come in a little bit here. Um, but, you know, I can remember growing up being forced to, and I absolutely believe it was we were being forced to say this. We had to say the Pledge of Allegiance of America, or the Pledge of Allegiance every single morning. There was no option to sit down. There was no option to stand up and not say anything. There was no option, other option. It was something that we absolutely had to do every morning. And to be totally honest, I don't remember anybody not saying it. It was just what we did. You know, they started in kindergarten, you know, this is what we do at the start of every class. And then it was first grade again, second grade, and all the way all all the way on until we got into senior high school and my senior year in high school that we actually had to say it. And, you know, like I said, at about eighth grade, for those of you listening in America, in the United States and Canada, you, you know about what eighth grade is. For those of you that are listening in Thailand, eighth grade is rough of, roughly about Matium 2. And for those of you that are listening in the UK or other parts of the world, it's like the second year of secondary school, roughly. But, you know, again, it was something that we were forced to say. And I didn't really know why. And it, uh, I kind of thought, well, you know, it's a way of, of, you know, saying I love my country and pledging allegiance to my flag. I love my country. This is why I say this. And not that I had an issue with it back then. It was just I didn't feel that I had to say this every single day because I know for a fact, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, once people left school, 
they did not say it every morning. As a matter of fact, I never even heard of people saying it outside of school. And I'm national anthem people would stand up you know i heard that at every single sporting event i heard it every morning when i was in the navy you know that is something i feel a little bit different you know and people would stand up or not stand up they would stop walking or not stop walking depending on who the person was or what their affiliation with the with what was going on at that point in time and it's not something that plays across the, the airwaves in the United States every single morning. It is something that you heard at the start of a sporting event. Uh, when I was in the Navy, it w in the military, I know that they do it every single morning at about 6 o'clock in the morning or roughly sun up. They would play the, the national anthem. But again, this wasn't the... the the, the Pledge of Allegiance. When, you know, and, and playing the national anthem, everybody stands up and or the majority of people stand up and if they have a hat on they take their hat off and they put it over their heart if they don't have their hat if they don't have a hat they put their hand over their heart if they're in in uniform they usually do the uh, salute you know and except for recently we started having a few people that started kneeling and sitting down during the national anthem and and this is something I'll get into a little bit here but anyway so back to the pledge of allegiance you know and I've been hearing stories since about the 90s about kids being ridiculed in school for not saying the Pledge of Allegiance. P kids getting in trouble by teachers for not standing up and saying the Pledge of Allegiance. And I, to be totally honest, at that point in time, I didn't really know what to think about it. You know, I was just like, mm, you know, should this be something that we have to say? I don't know. Um, and I, I, ha I have a lot of friends that probably think, Absolutely, this is something that you absolutely must say at the beginning of every day because that's what we grew up. And this is something that we were conditioned to do. And I believe that we were absolutely conditioned to do this. So because we were conditioned to do this, this is something that we believed was right. To put that in perspective, look at Nazi Germany. Kids were conditioned to spy on their parents and if they were not being patriotic, they turned them in. And that's what they felt was right. Now, we look at that and think, whoa, wait a second. That's not right. I rest my case. It's not right. We shouldn't be conditioned to do something like that. We should be given the option to say the Pledge of Allegiance. Now, if somebody decides to not recite the Pledge of Allegiance... That shouldn't be a problem. If somebody decides to sit down and not pledge allegiance, that should not be a problem. The reason for that is because in our Constitution, in not in our Constitution, sorry, in our, our Bill of Rights, in the, the First Amendment, we absolutely have the freedom of speech, which means, in my opinion, that if somebody chooses not to say the Pledge of Allegiance, that they are choosing to exercise their right for the freedom of speech. Full stop. If somebody decides not to stand up during the Pledge of Allegiance, they are absolutely, beyond a shadow of a doubt, exercising their rights under the First Amendment of freedom of speech. Just because they're not talking doesn't mean they're not exercising their freedom of speech. They are actually, they are absolutely expressing their freedoms in the United States that we have. To be totally honest, it isn't how it was originally written. The, the person who wrote the Pledge of Allegiance is Francis Bellamy, and he wrote it in 1892. And what he wanted is he wanted to write something that was very short. As a matter of fact, he felt it should be only 15 seconds long. And he wanted something to express Americanism. He wanted something to express, to help people express. No, sorry. He wanted to be able to give people a chance to express their Americanism, especially as we had more 
foreign people coming to the United States, more immigrants coming to the United States. I don't even know if I want to say immigrants because that kind of seems a bit derogatory, but they had foreign nationals coming to the United States. And so he felt that we needed something to kind of boost our Americanism to help people become more American. Now, to go with this, he was working for a, a newspaper or a magazine for youth and they wanted to help the they wanted they felt that every school should have a flag and how do they do this they tell they kind of tell the students that they needed a flag for their schools and to go with this they created a pledge to go with this flag in every school or every classroom and the original pledge of allegiance like i said was only 15 he wanted it only 15 seconds long and it goes like this, I pledge allegiance to my flag of the republic for which it stands, one nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now let's think about that for a minute. One nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Liberty and justice for all. To me, that sounds like we're talking about our Bill of Rights. Okay, our first 10 amendments. And the first amendment is freedom of speech. Now, we go back to this. Freedom of speech. Should people be forced to stand up and recite this freedom, uh, recite the Pledge of Allegiance? In my opinion, no. Be, by forcing us, by forcing them to stand up and recite the Pledge of Allegiance, we are taking away their freedom of speech. So right there, they're breaking the First Amendment by forcing them to say the, the Pledge of Allegiance. Now, I have a feeling that I'm going to assume that Mr. Bellamy, when he wrote the Pledge of Allegiance, he didn't have that in mind, that people would be forced to say the Pledge of Allegiance. Yes, he wanted people to be more American, but by reciting a few words in 15 seconds doesn't make you more of American than another person, in my opinion. So it was changed very shortly thereafter uh, to, I pledge allegiance to my flag and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. To me, that sounds... The first one and the second one sounds so much better. And it's not that I, I think that it was bad. I, I believe in that people still should have the right to express the fact whether they're... Uh, their freedom of speech. Abs I keep going back to the freedom of speech. I believe people should have that right, whether they say it or not. I don't think under God should be in the national, uh, sorry, in the Pledge of Allegiance because not everybody is a Catholic. Not everybody is a Christian. You know, I think people should be allowed to worship who they feel is right, be it Allah God, Jesus, Virgin Mother Mary, Ganesh, Shiva, whoever, you know, that, and that's just my opinion, whatever their higher power is. As a matter of fact, I have read that Bellamy was not happy with the change in the, the Pledge of Allegiance that came about in 18, or sorry, 1923. And so that tells me he wouldn't have been happy with the change that came about in 1954. Now the change was I pledge allegiance. This is from this was the one that was changed in 1923. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. He felt it was getting too long. From and this is just from what I've read that you know so by adding more to it, it, well, the reason they wanted to change it to one nation, uh, sorry, to the United States of America is because, again, we had an influx of foreign nationals coming to the United States and they didn't want them thinking of their flag when they were saying the Pledge of Allegiance to my flag. 
you know, so they wanted people to be thinking of the flag of the United States. Kind of makes sense, but again, we're going, in my opinion, we're kind of getting into that shadowy area of the First Amendment. Again, it's just my opinion. So, I think people, students, should have the right to stand up, sit down, and say the Pledge of Allegiance or not say the Pledge of Allegiance. And there has been cases as from 1964 where a judge says, we are going against our First Amendment rights. You cannot force students to say the Pledge of Allegiance. But it, people still do. They absolutely still force students to say the Pledge of Allegiance. And this is going against the, the freedom of speech. And a lot of it, I think, is has to do with, for example, when I was in school, we were absolutely conditioned to believe that it was right to say the Pledge of, the Pledge of Allegiance every morning to the flag. Conditioned. We were conditioned to believe it was the right thing to do. We weren't given a choice. We were conditioned. We were told it was the thing that we had to do. And by doing that, they took away our freedom of speech. They took away our choice, which as a kid, I didn't know at the time. But now that I look back, I think that the, I feel that this is absolutely wrong because we this, these are our first, these are our our bill of rights this is what our country was founded on the freedom of speech the freedom of religion the right to bear arms you know these things the right to to not to to not duh, duh, i can't talk now because i get so like wound up with this um you know you know the the fifth amendment which is you don't have to to go on trial against yourself you know you you don't have to bear witness against yourself unless you want to you know this gives us the right to do that these first amendment are not these for the the bill of rights our first 10 amend, amendments so it's like why are we forcing kids to break their bill of rights to to force them against their first amendment rights you know by conditioning we we do this by conditioning them conditioning them is not a good thing to give you an example of what conditioning looks like look at um germany during world war ii or, and prior to hitler and the not the nazis they conditioned their kids to spy on their parents and turn them in if they weren't being patriotic, if they weren't being good citizens. And they believed this is right. The kids believed they were do what they were doing was absolutely right. They were because they were conditioned. And we look at that and go, that was absolutely wrong. Yet we're doing the same thing in our schools by forcing the kids to say the Pledge of Allegiance. We are conditioning them to break their First Amendment rights. And we wonder why people get so upset. Like myself, I'm ups I get upset about this. I get really wound up about this. I'm sorry. <laughs> but it's like our First Amendment right is the freedom of speech. If, and that means if during the Pledge of Allegiance, if we want to stand up and say it, we have the right to stand up and say it. It also means if we don't want to say it, we, and we want to sit down. That is our right. That is a form of expressing our freedom of speech by not speaking. So I believe teachers, fellow students, administration in schools should not ridicule, should not punish students for not standing up and saying the Pledge of Allegiance. It is absolutely their freedom of speech. It is their First Amendment right. How can people, how do, how do people not understand this? And now I know I'm probably going to receive lots of hate about this. You know what? That's fine. That's your choice to, to hate on me, to send me messages and to tell me how much of a, a un-American I am, which you'd be wrong because I love my country. I absolutely do. You know, I'm a patriotic. I love my, um, I am a patriot. I love my country through and through. I disagree with some of the politics of my government, which is different. I believe the country and the government are two different things in my opinion. And I love my country. My government, 
I'm iffy about it a lot of times. But anyway, so the you know, by forcing, like I'm saying, I'm going on and on about this, but forcing our students to, forcing kids, children, to say the Pledge of Allegiance and conditioning them that it's the right thing to do is creating what we fought against in World War II. Absolutely. Children being conditioned to do something that's against their rights. Being conditioned to believe it's right and it's correct to do things that's actually against their rights as a citizen. I don't believe that's right. They, we shouldn't be doing that. So, all right, I'm going to end my episode there. And I want to say thank you for listening. And I want you to always remember that our Bill of Rights, our first 10 amendments, are very, very important. And each and every one of us should stand up and defend those bills of rights. Okay? So, that's all I have to say. All right, thanks a lot. See you next time. Bye-bye. Please rate my show or leave a comment or make suggestions of what you would like me to talk about. You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Dom Dumas, on Twitter at Dom Dumas, and on Instagram, Dom underscore Dumas. Thanks a lot.